Why, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I don't think that's ever been funny. Even the first time it was done, I don't think it was funny. Anyway, um, welcome to this. Uh, this is kind of a chord melody crash course for the mandolin. Um, I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes about um, how I play chord melody in big kind of umbrella terms. Some of the things I think about when I'm playing... Um, just sitting down and playing, or when I really try to figure out a, a, an arrangement. Um, and hopefully um, some of it will, uh, or maybe all of it, but uh, that you'll find something useful here. Um, so the biggest thing to think about with chord melody is what the goal of it is. And it's very simple. There's, there's really two um, goals. One is to play the melody, and the other is to play uh, chords, uh, enough chords, enough harmony, so we can hear uh, the song and, and harmonically where it is as we're playing the melody. And um, to demonstrate some of these ideas, I thought I would take a song that a lot of mandolin players already play and, and seem to like playing, um, George Gershwin's Lady Be Good. Uh, I wrote, wrote the lyrics, but we're not dealing with those. Um, and I, I'll post below a, a, a link uh, to me playing a, a kind of a full uh, version of that song as a, a chord melody solo mandolin thing. Um, but just uh, some some things to think about. So the first thing, the melody. Um, and we're just going to take the first uh, eight bars of this um, as an example. So, so the melody is um, in the key of G, which I know is where mo most people play it. So let's take the first phrase. Now, um, I know a lot of you know it, so uh, I'm assuming that, that that's where we're all coming from. If you don't, I'm, I'm sure you could find a lead sheet somewhere. But the first chord we're dealing with is a G, uh, a G major chord. It could be a G6, it could be a G major 7. Um, so. Uh, for for this example, and and these there's no rules here. These are just guidelines, uh, things to think about, helpful kind of markers. Um, but for this example, what we're going to do is keep the melody as the highest voice in the chord voicing, um, and so uh, the, the the harmony will happen below that melody, uh, which is a nice way uh, place to start from. So uh, the highest note in the voicing is going to be that D, and we have. Uh, this is that's a D on an A on the A string, and we have the D string and the G string to fill out the harmony. So, what are some G chords we could use? Well, I, and I'm not going to get into the kind of the the nitty gritty of harmony and how to create chords. Um, uh, maybe another time. But uh, right now, some G chords we could uh, play with this D on on top. Um, there's all sorts of uh, possibilities here. You could you could do that. Open strings are nice. So you're playing a mandolin. It's nice to hear the sound of the mandolin. You could do that. That's a G major 7. That's a G6. All with the open string. You could do this. And you could do this. Now, those are all perfectly good um, G chords, G major chords with a D on, on the top. Um, now, as far as what's the best choice, well, the best choice, uh, your ear is going to dictate what the best choice is, and that's going to be different for everyone, which is why it's nice to hear different people play. They have different um, tastes. Um, for me, what I like to think about is not um, anything in a vacuum. It, it all has to do with what comes before and what comes after. I, it's all about the context, um, and that tells me what's the, the best choice or, or a good choice for the given situation. So, um, so, well, what comes before? Nothing. Assuming there's no intro, there's no, that, that's the first thing we hear, there's nothing before. So what comes after? Well, the next uh, chord that we're going to encounter is a, a C7 chord. A C7 comes in there, right? Okay, so we know we're going from G to C7. Well, what are some C7 uh, voicings we could use with this D on top, which would make it a C9. Uh, I guess we could do we could do that. 
those are all valid, uh, some more valid than others, but those are some all valid uh, C7 voicings. So which one is uh, makes sense? Um, a lot of them do, but for me right now, what makes sense is um, this one. If we're, if we're starting with this G6, and that's B, E, D, uh, 1, 2, 3, frets 4, frets 2, fret 5. I'm not really good at thinking in frets, but I could give you the notes. B, E, and D. If that's our G6 voicing, when we move to C7, I like this. The reason that I like it is uh, there's only one note that changes. This C7 chord, or this C9 uh, with the melody, it's a B flat, an E, and a D. Uh, frets 3, frets 2, and frets uh, 5. Now, before we move on in the phrase, I, I just want to talk to you a moment about how we articulate our voicings. Uh, how I articulate my voicings. You can do it how, however you want. But um, I, I like thinking in terms of um, the different kind of sounds we can get, not doing anything different with the left hand and uh, doing all sorts of different things with the right hand. So we can play them as just uh, uh, strummed chords, kind of block voicings. Just strummed. Um, but we can also uh, bring out the bass or bring out the melody. So to bring out the bass would be this sort of thing. And to bring out the melody would be this. When I say bring out, I mean separate it to, to emphasize it. Um, what I like uh, about emphasizing the bass is because that's, that's the note that changes between the voicings. Um, I would encourage everyone to, uh, if you can, not think of these uh, chords as block voicings, not think of this as a G6 and not think of this as a C9, but rather think about the notes that are within these chords, because if you think about them just as blocks, it can limit how you're seeing what it is you're playing. If you think about them in terms of notes, um, and and voicings and full voicings, you see it as a G6 to a C7, C9, but you also see these two notes staying the same, and and this B moving to a B flat. And once you can see that, then you have the choice to to emphasize it, to not emphasize it, but at least you know it's there. Um, so okay, so here we are. And now the melody goes, and the chord there is a, a G again. And for ease, I, I would just go back to that same G voicing. The ear has already um, heard it. Uh, they under, the ear understands it, and, and so uh, it's familiar. So go back to it. If uh, uh, That's what I'm going to choose to do right now. Okay, so we have a quick E7. And again... Uh, lots of choices for E7 with an E on top here. Uh, you could do that. You could do that. It's a little more abstract. You could do that. You could do this. Um, they're all valid E7s. Uh, again, it depends on what you want to do with it. That's um, If you can justify it uh, musically, um, th that's uh, it can be as abstract as you want. Um, I, I, just for ease, I'm going to jump up here, and we, we have a D, a G sharp, and an E. What I like about this E7 is that it's a very basic E7. Um, it has everything that in a 7th chord needs for us to hear that it's a 7th chord, and what I mean by that is um, it has the 3rd, 
and the seventh. And by third and seventh, again, we're not going to go too deeply into theory, but the third and the seventh, I, I, that's the scale degrees. Uh, so the third of E7 is a G sharp. The seven of an E7 is a, a D natural. Um, and so, the, so I'm just choosing to do that um, somewhat arbitrarily, but... So now we have an A minor there, right? And, and there's all sorts of choices. You could do, um, you could do that. You could do that. A any of those will be fine. Um, because again, we have this melody note of a D and we have an open a D string and a G string to, to uh, fill in the harmony. Um, Right now, I'm just choosing to, to do a very simple A minor chord. It's not even a, a minor seven. It's just an A minor. Uh, we have an A and an E and a D. So, so far, we have this much. Okay. That's the, that's the end of the phrase. Um, now, harmonically, uh, the chord is D7, G. So we could do very simply, uh, again, we want to keep that melody note on top. And like with the E7, the only harmonic uh, information that we had in that voicing was the third and the seventh. And uh, we could do the same thing here. The, se uh, the third, I'm sorry, the, se the seventh of D7 and the third. So we have a C, an F sharp, and a B, uh, frets 5, 4, and 2. And then just, just a two note um, chord, the, the root and the third for a G. So So altogether, that phrase would sound something like this. Now, I want to just talk about one possible reharmonization here, um, especially when we're playing solo mandolin. You can reharmonize as much as you want. There's no rhythm section uh, who's going to be playing different chord changes than you are if you're the only instrument. Um, and that gives you a tremendous freedom to kind of um, embellish the harmony and, and make it as, uh, as different or um, elaborate a as you want. And everyone's ear is different, and your ear will dictate uh, how much is too much, what's gone too far. Um, but just one uh, one idea for a place that you might want to reharmonize uh, or that you could reharmonize um, is at the very end here. Um, this right here. So, in, in the music, uh, the way Gershwin wrote it, it's just uh, D seven G five one. Um, you can always put in a two chord before the five chord. And um, in, in, because we're playing solo and we don't have to deal with um, someone playing a minor two if we're playing a, a dominant two, um, because we've talked a little bit about this third and seventh thing, you can implement that um, with this harmonization. So you can play, instead of D7, G, you could play A7, D7, G because it will eventually get to G. It's just a little bit delayed. Um, and a way to do that um, is just like, that's a D7, because we have the third and the seventh. If you just move up one fret, that's an A7. So... That's what we're going to do harmonically. Um, now, keeping that melody note on top, it would sound something like this. C7, 
C-sharp, G, B, C, F-sharp, B. Okay, um, now you could take it a little bit further um, through the cycle of, of fourths. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, um, just Google it and you'll, you'll see how that all works. But, but um, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, the cycle of force. And, and if we move through that cycle, we, we can extend the, um, the harmonization. So instead of just going from A to D to G, we could go, uh, we could really start, um, we could start at B and go B, E, A, D, G. So harmonically it would be Now we want that melody note up there. So that that might be a bit of a stretch. Um both literally and maybe uh, harmonically too for some people and, and if you don't like how it sounds you don't don't do it um, but and that's a place because you have this really nice uh, kind of chromatic bass motion to bring out the bass uh, note so the, the whole phrase with this little harmonization uh, addition, ad addendum, uh, would be something like this. So those are some ideas um, for you know how to kind of approach a, a song in terms of chord melody, um, I hope this has given some of you some ideas. Um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have, you could let me know. If not, don't let me know. Just uh, go about your day. Uh, okay, thanks. Take care.